Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I'm your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and International Bestselling Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 90 countries. So whether it's your first time joining us or you've been listening to us for some time, I want to thank you to those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here, we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing, highlighting that transformational moment that changed our lives, and how we elevate those lives around us. You can listen to us live here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, Tuesday through Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can also join our Facebook group, Life Transformation Radio Community, and never miss an episode by subscribing where you listen to podcasts. Life Transformation Radio can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, TuneIn, Player FM, Overcast, CastBox, Himalaya. You can also catch us on Google Podcasts, and we are on Pandora. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and search for Life Transformation Radio. And go ahead and subscribe there as well. On the show, my guests are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing human beings that are impacting the world around them. And my guest today does exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, Tuesday through Friday, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, go ahead and give us a call at 657 383 11 Again, the number is 657-383-1109. And with that, please help me welcome to the show my guest for today. I'm excited to bring to you Sharon Corsaro. So, Sharon, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hello, and thank you so much, Sean Douglas. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so excited. So excited. We've had some amazing conversations um, so far. And I think that this is the time where we're really going to dive in, kind of kind of take <laughs> to a level that maybe we haven't explored in depth on this show. I have a feeling that's probably where we're going to go. Uh, but um, I think that the topic of today uh, is is your core alignment and a lot of what you talk about is you know the the energy management the 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 energy and everything the the core essence of of who you are and and in alignment with maybe the universe maybe with what you're doing it could be something as simple as do you align with that person as in your spouse or in your friends uh, how do you align with your maybe your kids I think we have a lot that we could go into uh, but either way I'm excited to to have this topic on the show. Very good. I love it. Um, you know what I can say is that in your in your pondering of alignment, the concept of alignment, it is actually alignment within self. So it's mm. alignment with our power source in ourself. So that when we mm-hmm. speak and when we are doing in the world, we're in alignment with that power. And that mm-hmm. is our fuel for everything. Love it. And I completely 100% agree. The title of this episode yeah. is What is Your Core Alignment with Master Alchemist Sharon Corsaro? She is a true alchemist. Yeah. She is a master of energy, but her greatest gift is sharing that mastery in a deeply simple, grounded, and humble manner. Having walked away from a very successful rise in the corporate world early on to traveling the world with no map other than her awakening spirit guiding her, Sharon's decades of experience are a living example of the awakening process. Yet her roots in high-end 
corporate communications with Fortune 100 companies gives her a deep grounding that is now matched by her spiritual knowing that leads her in all things. Sharon is coming forth new now to share the power she unearthed within herself to awaken and activate that same power that is available in all. The key components of a collaborative, conscious, creative process that, that operates in partnership with benefit to the whole. Having done a life study on how the creating process works, Sharon is now a master alchemist who understands core energy and a powerful businesswoman who understands solutions while holding impeccable vision that sees strategic alignment for best next actions immediately, usually in one conversation. Business alignment with business core power is the answer to gold. Core alignment is everything. As a personal guide, Sharon has walked the walk. From a life with no vision whatsoever early on, she is now wide awake. It's been a long road, and now she is here, alive and well, to tell the story and to share stories from deep encounters across the globe. Everything is truly about energy alignment in business, in relationships, in personal development, in governing, and in solutions on grand scales. To understand energy dynamics at its core and have deeply grounded business and worldly knowledge is a powerhouse conversation possibly unmatched. If you want to learn more about Sharon, you can go to her Facebook right there, her link. You can copy and paste that or search for her, Sharon L. Corsaro. Click on the link and send her a friend request, letting her know that you listened to this episode of Life Transformation Radio. Sharon, after reading all that, which is amazing, I have to ask <laughs> your why. Why do you do um, what you do? Wow, it's such a big question, right? You know what? I um, I think about that, and I, I come up with the answer is simply I must. <laughs> I must. It's it's like as it. though I have. It's as though I have no choice in this matter. Of course, I do. But that, in fact, is in a nutshell, the journey of life that I have, that I have walked, that I've lived, is that I've had this overriding, um, I want to say almost burden, but this, this carrying of this mission to deliver. And I would say that I had to deliver myself first. And now it is my duty to share what I have unearthed and help deliver others. Because it is our God-given right. It is our, it is, I believe it is our, it is our path in life to unfold and awaken and, and awaken to our own power and be in that when we make decisions and when we build businesses and when we do what we're doing in the world. So my, my why, I feel like there's many answers to that, but it, when it comes down to it, the bottom, bottom of it, the bottom line is it, it's, it's my calling. It's my must. It's, I won't feel complete when I finish this life if I don't, if I don't do this. So I do it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. I, everything yeah. I'm doing right now is something I love. Yeah. I don't want to ever spend time doing something I hate. I feel like there's so many people that are that wake up and go to work or they feel like they have to be an entrepreneur. I know so many people who were entrepreneurs and they were good. They were really good. And people I looked up to yeah. decided that, you know what? I'm just unhappy and I'm miserable and I'd rather just go work a job. And some people, that's what they want to do. Right. They, they think that entrepreneurship is glamorous and glitzy and it's amazing. And then they do it for a couple of years and they're burnt out. They hate it. They're like, man, this is a tunnel where this sucks. Right. 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 But just, yeah, because that you know what? That, and there's nothing wrong well, with that. Well, that right there is, it's what is the driving force in what you're doing? What's driving a person? And if a person becomes an entrepreneur for the wrong reasons, just like if they do anything for the wrong reasons, we're not going to be happy. It's, it's not the answer. Right? Yeah, I, I think – so a lot of times people want to get into entrepreneurship and business because of time freedom and I want to build my own thing or I want to do my own – or whatever. 
That's not to say yeah. that you can't do that while you're working a job. Like the same right. things that you're but searching love, can be I'm found in your, your job. Right. But you, you, you know as well as anyone, I'm sure, that when you're doing entrepreneurship, it's, it is a um, blood, sweat, and tears. It's, it's not having oh, yeah. a lot of free time, really. Right. No. Right. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. However, I will say that having your own business and having the freedom to make decisions – is is yes. what I love the most. I don't have to go, yes. you know, I have nine different bosses, Bob, you know, like just like office space, yeah. you know, I got nine guys that tell me that I did something wrong. You know, I love right. the fact that I can work with my team to get things accomplished. We're all in it together. Right. But that I don't have to answer to a bunch of people and get berated or ridiculed that maybe something didn't work out right, or maybe something didn't go fast enough, or maybe something didn't work out here or so, right. I mean, there's so many, right. So many managers out there that micromanage work, but they can't mm-hmm. lead people. Right. They just, they just and can't lead people. That- and all they do is manage work. And, and what you are speaking of is the, is the core of people being in your power. What you're speaking of is the big piece that motivates you to be an entrepreneur. So you can work in blood, sweat, and tears work, but it's, it's for you. You're empowered because you're doing it for your, your life's work. <laughs> right? There's a lot yeah. of energy oh, yeah. in that. Powerful mm-hmm. energy in that, and it's you know it's the difference between doing something when for someone when they are a really kind good person versus someone who's got a whip on your back making you do it. The mm-hmm. energy in you is happy to do what you're doing because it's for the right reason. Right. Yeah, I. Versus, 100%, versus 100% when you're, when you're, right, versus when you're slaving and you're working for someone else, it's like the core energy inside a given person is like dead. It's like going dead. Mm-hmm. It's not empowered when someone is telling you what to do and there's no motivation for the energy inside, the creative energy to say, hey, well, I've got a a new solution for how we can do this. If Mm. that is not available, that person's life force energy has no reason. And it starts to just go dead. And that is what leads to uh, depression and physical problems and all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. When people yep. don't have that core reason that make gives them good happy reason to get up in the morning. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I I look at sometimes people on social media and I'm like, man, they got it all figured out. Like, look at them. Big business, lots of followers. I mean, they got amazing content. It's just it's just amazing. Right. But I guarantee mm-hmm. you. You look at people like Tony <laughs> Robbins and the big people, right? They have their own set of yeah. challenges. They have their own set of issues. Just because you reach a certain level doesn't mean that there's no challenges and no issues and no trials and tribulations. Well, They exactly. have their own set of challenges. Exactly. So, and check this out. The given times that we're in right now, like this is like the, the great reckoning is how I have seen it. Because it doesn't care who you are, and it doesn't care how successful you are. It doesn't care how how much money you have. There's like this leveling of the playing field, and and that is where, in my opinion, it becomes all of a sudden this knowing of who we are, knowing yourself inside, and knowing you are you are right with your creator, and you're you're in a good place in your heart. And in what you're doing in the world, that is the is the gold. That is the value. It's not about the physical. 
It's not about how many right. followers, <laughs> honestly. Right. Right. You know. Yeah, I always tell people when you're at, you know, if you're to host a podcast, you want to monetize, you want to have millions of downloads. I mean, that's great. That's great. But what does that translate yeah. to? Instead of asking how right. many downloads you have, ask how many people you've helped. Ask how many people you've reached. Ask how many people you've transformed. That, to me, is a good indication. You know, the downloads and money is just a byproduct of the energy that you're putting forth into the universe. That's what I believe. I believe that money is the energy (laughs) that, that is the byproduct of your direct actions. So if you have no money, it might be your relationship with money. It might be that you're a saver, a spender, or a hoarder. Those are three money classes right there, saver, spender, hoarder. It might be that you don't manage debt well. It could be something simple as I don't know how to budget my life, right? I don't know how to budget, you know, whatever. Still energy. Right. Or it could be the fact that you are so – and I see it. Oh, my gosh, I see it. I see it. I see it. And this is what, and this is how I tell 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 sign. I see this all the time in entrepreneurship right now. Oh, well, I mean, me serving my clients means that they're paying me and I'm giving them my service, my program, my product, my service, whatever. Yeah, that, that's how I serve my audience. Oh, what? wow. That's so, 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 so the, That's so, so, empty. so, the, so the guy at the, at the, the guy at the car dealership? You paid for an oil change. Are you telling me that he served you in some way? Like he gave you a freaking oil change. Like there's nothing special about that. You know, be special. You know, be really special. Right. It'd be served you by explaining that in the next maybe couple hundred miles, probably going to need new tires, and then recommended a set that you would get, or cleaned out your filters in your car. Hey man, I want an right. extra step. Serving to me is you going the extra mile. Not doing the bare minimum. Just because you do right. the bit, just because you show up on time does not mean that you're serving anybody. It's you showing up on time and giving up of yourself. Exactly. You you're totally right. Yeah, and you know, and here's the thing, is that when going back to your comment of that you love what you're doing, when that is the case. It's like you're spilling that into the world. You're spilling your heart love into your words, into your interactions, into what you what you give and what you how you serve. And that sort of naturally it it's got this built in quality that it um it 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 has like a, a moreness to it. I made up that word. <laughs> It's it's got a it's got <laughs> it's got a um you know an abundance that is the word actually it's got an abundance yep. to it when you yep. are really loving what you're doing and that is infectious also it grows it affects people in a positive way and and we yep. need that in the world we we need uh, a even lot more of now. <laughs> Totally, oh, there's, right? so, there's so much hate. There's so much hate. There's so much negativity in this. Like today, I oh, feel it. Really? So much it's negativity. Really? really. It, and, and it's it's really, it is, it is so on us. We are so like riding, like riding the razor's edge on this, in this pivotal moment. To really stand in in heart, truth, believing, love, caring, like all of these things that that we really want for ourselves. But as soon as somebody, you know, does something that can trigger us, you know, the, the tension, it makes people just go off and suddenly you've just totally fallen off of your your really positive mojo. And yeah. And that's a challenge right now. That's like a giant challenge right now for people, I oh, yeah. think. And oh, for all, uh, us as a whole. Yeah. The, yep. Um, yep. I agree. Yeah. So yeah. the show is about transformation. And we all go through many transformative moments that shape who we are. 
So I'm curious for you, if you had to narrow it down, what sticks out for you? What what could you recall? What would you consider a transformational moment that changed you, changed your life, and it puts you on the path to what we're doing today? Hmm. Well, there is a there is a time in my life that that comes to mind, and I want to link it back to. Um, that, that transformation is constant now in our every moment. And that's a little bit what we were just saying. So to answer your question, I'm going to share this. That I had a, it's, it's a big story, and I, I give you just a little bit of it. That, um, I had a huge epiphany when I this is a long time ago. I was working in the corporate world. I worked actually in an um, agency, and my client was a giant global leading company. Still, not my client. So I was I was living a very highly productive, highly uh, successful life. That I that I reached that at a young age. Like I came straight out the gate from college, and I was like gangbusters. So I end up taking a break. I, I was a workaholic. I literally did like 80 hour weeks. I was traveling all over the U.S. And I took a break. And I said, I, I told my boss, I, I was an extension of a, a New York office. I was on the West Coast. And I met up with my boss in Chicago. And I said, by the way, I'm taking a month off. <laughs> it was nice. almost just like that. So I just it, it, some things were shifting. It was towards the end of the year. There was we were going to have holidays. We were going to be closed for like two weeks because of the holidays. So I was like, I'm taking this time and I'm taking this chunk of time and I'll be gone. I'm leaving the country. And so I took the the major life changing trip, which I didn't know it was that when that happened. But I took a trip, and about three days into that trip, um. Wow, it's making me feel emotional to share this. I, I don't share this all that often. Um, about three days into that trip, I was on a ferry. And it was kind of like late morning uh, business rush hour kind of thing. It's like, like a little late, late though. And I'm on holiday. And I am looking around. And I'm a young professional. I'm, you know, driven, hard, hard running professional. And I am looking around on this ferry. I'm sort of in the back and I'm looking around at these middle-aged people. And I look at this scene and I'm like, holy shit. I am going to turn around and be 50 years old and say, well, my life. And the next thought was, wow. and, and no, I am not. Yeah. And in that moment, I said, I don't, I, have, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing, but this ain't it. <laughs> it's so powerful wow. to know, right? So powerful to connect back to that moment. I'm totally right there right now as I tell it to you. So that started a very long journey of completely unraveling and rebuilding me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. That self that self awareness though I think is absolutely key. You know, some people live thirty, forty years until they get to that moment where it's just unbearable anymore. Man, I wish twenty years ago. I really wish I would have taken that trip. Uh I had a chance to yeah. go to uh, Austria one time and I passed. I was like, nah, no, oh. no, that's just gonna be so much fun, it's gonna be amazing. I'm like I've already seen a lot of countries, man. I'm good. Oh. Like, eh, I got some other stuff I'd rather be doing, you know? And I always wondered, I'm like, oh, man, I bet it'd be great. Started looking at it, you know, on the internet, started looking at it, and like, a lot of great, great, great things to see. Three days go by, uh-huh. my friends come back, and they're like, oh, my gosh, you missed it. It was amazing. Oh. I got, they're showing me pictures. They met these people. Oh. They had a party. I mean, they're just they're on a trip to Austria just to see what they can get into. They just no plans, nothing, no reservations, no nothing. They just they got on the plane, landed in Austria, and go 
Now what do we do? Like that was uh, like that was the plan. And I'm like, oh my That's god, super cool. Like, just got to figure something out. We got to walk to a hotel. We got to get an Uber somewhere. Like, I don't know what we're gonna do, but we're just gonna go. So all they oh, knew wow. was that they had a plane ticket there, and they had a certain amount of time to be back at the airport the next day. So their plan was to kind of hang around, like near kind of where the airport was, kind of feel things out, and then like go exploring with it. Yeah, they're showing me pictures, how they planned it out. The trip just kind of unfolded. They just followed wherever it would go. Like, what do you think about this place? And they, and they, they tried to not say no, like, reasonably. Um, if somebody goes, oh, you should try this place. Like, thanks, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. You know, let's go see what it's about. All right? So there's, you know, I think four people, five people, something like that. And, and I just, ah, I should have went. I mean, they oh, talked boy. about it for weeks after that. Oh my gosh, remember that oh. time that we were in the, Oh, it was so funny. Like, remember that? And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> so, but that awareness, that, and you, that awareness. And you want them to just shut up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's that, it, it's that awareness. Yeah. You yeah. know, that, that, that dictates. Yeah. You know, how you feel about it, you know, yeah. and, and I don't, I don't live with any regret. You know, I had a great weekend. Um, if I look back on it, it's all for nothing because the person that I wanted to spend that weekend with, we're no longer with, you know, we're, we're, we're not together. Oh, wow. Um, oh. So, you know, but, but I, you I, know I don't, what? I don't, it, are you here? Go ahead. Oh, there. Okay. Sorry. I lost you. Um, oh, you know, it's, there's so much to that. There's so much. And this is, this is the, the thing is that to, to, if we can shed some of our self-imposed limits, like, oh no, I shouldn't do that because I need to do this and allow some of the fluidity of actually really being in the moment and really going with what shows up, if we can allow that, there is so much magic. There is so much that can show up in front of you that you, it's not planable. You don't, you couldn't even know how to plan that. And it's the people you might need. It's the memories you make. It's the, it's, Honestly, I think it's so much about the encounters that I have so many people I meet based on I took a random turn <laughs> or I did a random mm-hmm. thing. I have, I mean, I have like just piles of those experiences of, of, ha- of meeting really great people, having really great encounters because I learned how to allow and how to listen to my own inner compass. And there is yeah. so much power in that. Mm-hmm. Like God, I want the world to know this because mm-hmm. all of that mental thinking. Oh, I have to. There's a spirit that is alive in us and in the world, and if we can allow ourselves to be connected to that greater world space of things that are like the river of life, there's like enormous opportunity waiting to be had, and I mean. It's not just all play and fun. It's like massive business connections can happen because you Mm. allow that random, oh, I just feel like I want to get a cup of coffee here for no reason, for who knows why. You know, there's there's a spirit that's driving us and it leads us through this un- uh, illogical and non-linear way. So it's through that feeling, that sudden, oh, you know, it just feels like a good idea. Those random things are leading us. And if we can learn how to listen to that, how to allow those, there is giant magic available. You know, a connection that you, other people might have just like held themselves to try and make that connection. And you just happen to be right in front of the person all the time. Unplanned. <laughs> mm-hmm. Things like that. That so said, happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With that said, how do you elevate the world around you? With everything that we've talked about so far, 
You know, what is it that you do? How do you elevate the world around you with all that knowledge? Well, you know what? Things like this. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, really, you know, um, I think the answer to that, well, my, Oh my God, I, it's been a long, long journey to, to go from that, that epiphany moment that I shared with you. When that epiphany moment happened, I was the left brain thinking person. My creative capacity was, it didn't even exist in me. And I live entirely by it now. So there's a giant, uh, there's a giant growth process that has occurred in me and, and, in the process and now i live by sharing that with people empowering everyone and everything around me shining the gold shining the light awakening the gold and awakening the light in everything by by the by the attitude i bring to the table by the mm. um grace that i bring to the table by the desire to bridge highly um, divided places by, by putting us into conversations where we, we can have compassion with each other, even when we disagree with each other, where, where we can bridge our gaps because to be together in this world, we've got to. So, yeah. So, wow. What, what is my answer? I think it's, it's my it's, it's like it oozes from me it oozes from me this uh you know i used to call myself back in the beginning a long time ago i used to call myself growing bold it was growing bold from the inside out that's what i did well i like that <laughs> oh, thank you and it's what i still do it's what i do and then it it developed into the next phase which was embracing creative and the next thing, which embracing creative is embracing the creative, embracing our creative power, embracing the creative in everything, and and understanding the creative process and how we create. And now the next phase that is that is, is really bursting from me right now is really owning our core power, and learn and really and actually this comes back to that transformation. Transformation is a constant process. I literally used to think, and I think many people perhaps do, I used to think, okay, transformation, that's like something you go through and then you're done. <laughs> and it's oh, not. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a constant process. And what I realized, actually, in preparing to talk with you, I was like, wait a minute, life is transformation. It is ongoing. We have, and further, we have the opportunity to transform in every moment because we have the potential to think and react and be and do as we always did, as we were ingrained to do from the old paradigm way of living in a lot of fear and having a whole bunch of baggage and all kinds of crap. We have that option in every moment or we have the option to recognize, okay, I'm being triggered. Okay, what is really my position? How do I really feel about this situation? How do I really get responsible with my words and be respectful to my own self while being respectful to this other person and bridge Mm -hmm. this gap? That is transformation always in the moment, continual in in business, in everything. I love it. Amen. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. Wow, that's a huge takeaway for this episode. Definitely a, a, a <laughs> massive, massive, massive takeaway. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. That's uh, it answers a lot of questions. Yeah. I mean, I think it does. I think it, <laughs> I mean, people sit there and po- can you think about how many how many different questions comes up for people. And I think if they understand what you just said, I think would answer a lot of those questions. It's the truth, right? I mean, honestly, Sean, like you and I started engaging about about doing this right here a while back. And and I Mm -hmm. pondered it and I was like, okay, 
the the transformation. Which part is the transformation in my life? And I was like, wait a minute. Life is the transformation. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> life transformation. That's a, you know, that's a great uh, title for a, for a, a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so what I want to cover briefly is is the core alignment. We always talk about like you know who are you at your core? Who are you uh-huh. at 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 your best? In oh, what yeah? ways Good. are you aligned? does my core values align with this joint venture I'm about to do? Does my, right. does my audio match my visual? Meaning I'm saying I love you, but does my visual match my audio? Exactly. So are they not in alignment? Right? So, so let's talk right. about that. What do you think about core alignment other than it's everything? <laughs> yeah, other than it's everything. Well, you see, here's the thing. <laughs> See, here's the thing is that we have each of us it, individually and in, say, a business and in a project and in a group, we, everything has core power. And that's like the pot of gold. That's like the core energy, the real power, the real juice to the project. Okay, which maybe you could say is like it's real driving purpose. That's for an individual. That's for a business. That's for a project. Okay, so there's this real core purpose, real core energy power. Okay, and what happens is that often we it's like we're over here on an offshoot somewhere. We're on like a sideline somewhere, and we're we've got all this copy we've written that's saying, oh yeah, this whole thing, and we've got this product and this. But is it really hitting the mark? Are we really, are you really hitting the place where you have something really valuable and there's a sector of people that really need it? And have you, have you matched those up? Are those, are you in alignment with the powerful energy of what you have to share with the place that is waiting to receive that. Is this making sense? Absolutely. I mean, I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, totally Jen, thank you. <laughs> so, I, so I think that people are trying I, to find that, though. Yeah. And this is people the thing. Here's the deal. Find that. Yes. And the, the thing is, is that on Check it out. Until we know what we're looking for, we don't know to look for it. So I'm here to say, here is what you're looking for. This is your fuel, the fuel for your vehicle, the power center of you. That's what you want to find. So so ponder that. Go inside and do your brainstorming, whatever it takes. And there's lots of things to do. Okay, but until you know that's where you're, what you're looking for, that's your target is to find where is your core power. Until you realize that's what you want to be looking for, you're not looking for it. You see? Can you imagine if you walked into so, a room and you said, "Hey, everybody, maybe you walk into your family room. Hey, 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 have you have you seen my thing? Like, have you seen it? Or is like, what thing? Like, <laughs> I'm looking for." I'm looking for that thing. Well, what's it look like? I don't know. I'm just, I, I'm looking for it. I don't know where it's at. I got to find exactly. it. What are you looking for? I don't know. Can you imagine the conversation? I don't know what I'm looking for. I just, I know I need to find it. I was look at you go, what right. the hell? Guess what everybody does <laughs> in life? <laughs> that. <laughs> I got to find something that makes me happy. What does it look like? I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what that is that makes me happy, but I got to find it. And and check it out because, honestly, I think we don't know. People don't know. People don't know. Oh, my yep. God, Sean, I have been on yep. this journey and this path for so long, and I have now figured out this is the heart of it. Like, 
think about people that aren't even on a path of, of discovery or having done like yep. mountains of deep interpersonal work. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy to know. It's not easy to know. And so, so here I am saying, Hey world. Hey everybody. It is about your power. That's what you want to get in touch with. So I just thought of an interesting question. Just, just as I was, mm-hmm. I'm just, I don't know, I'm very inquisitive, but I, I'm, I'm internalizing and I'm understanding what you're saying and I'm, and I'm receiving what you're saying. And immediately internal, my voice immediately said, because you were, you were mentioning, you got to do the workout, you got to do the work on you. And, and it's all about alignment um, and, and I'm listening and I'm like, ah, yeah. And then instantly, I don't know if it was a conscience or if it was just a natural who I am, mm-hmm. but we got to do work on ourselves. We'd all agree that there's a lot of work to be done. Of course. And sure. one, one thought immediately was I want to raise kids that don't need a therapist to fix their childhood. So that's one thing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so there's that, but, and I don't, I don't want to get, biblical in in the in that sense but to that point no matter what you believe um we're all created equal um we're all created in his image um you have the power to create an amazing life for yourself you know all this stuff i wonder if right. we if, if if we're either born this way or we have it in us why do we have to do so much work work i wonder if it right. our upbringing that that made us this way or is it society that made us this way or because it seems like everybody that i talk to on the show it doesn't matter if they're 70 doesn't matter if they're 20 has gone through some sort of transformation which gave them an mm-hmm. aha which gave them an awakening which then gave them the confidence to then go out and do the same for others that seems right. to be the baseline. But if we're born right. amazing, these amazing powers, why do we have to work so hard on ourselves? <laughs> totally. You're like, if we're so <laughs> awesome, why the hell do we have to work so damn hard to know that? <laughs> All this power, you know, I mean, what are we, like, what are we, I wonder what we're fixing. Are we fixing our broken right. home? Are we fixing our broken childhood? Are we fixing what society has, has made us think about ourselves? I mean, five years ago, it was all about self-love. That's all you, all the self-love um, podcast and the self-love event and the self-love book and the self-love coaching course and the self Oh, you're not so, what? No self-love? What? Like that was, now what I hear like 18, 19, is energy. Oh, energy management. Oh, you got oh you gotta get your energies in line. You gotta get your line. I mean, I don't know. Really? Oh my god, that's hilarious because this has been my life for decades. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you were on the fringe. Can can you imagine? Listen, listen to me. I'm an I'm an eighties baby, well, okay? Can you imagine okay. okay if in the eighties and I was born in eighty three, in eighty eight, I'm five years old says to do something and go, Mom, you know, take my feelings into account. I I, I, I would want to be addressed in a I would get punched in the face. No, <laughs> my mom was like, I don't care about your dog on feelings. Like that wasn't a thing. That was a thing. Your feelings weren't a thing. Um, you weren't in the military, oh you're God. not even issued feeling. Like come on. Uh, but what do we talk oh about now? God. Energy feelings uh-huh. right i mean uh-huh. i think i you've been doing this for decades the society uh-huh. hasn't been doing this for decades so that well, is new. And you're right and that's why and that's why i am like i can't believe it oh my god my moment has arrived <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm so like i have been forever i've been you know, I would give up on it i'm like nobody cares to hear what i have to say but now it's time. I'm so grateful. <laughs> you know what's funny is I can imagine 
someone sitting there and going, ah, the world has finally caught up to me. (laughs) (laughs) They finally, you love me. You really love me, right? Like, like you, you get me. (laughs) Oh my God, right? It really took you three years. I want to say, I, I want to come, I want to come back to what you're asking. I mean, you kind of have, you're posing a question. I don't know if it's to me necessarily, yeah. but it's to the, you know, no, what the hell is the deal here? World. And yeah. I, I want to say that, you know what, all of those, pretty much all of those, is it this or is it that? It's pretty much yes to all of it. But, but, and here, I'll, I'll kind of put it in a nutshell. The, that basically, we come into this world and it's um, the world is really dense. And I use that word in the actual sense. Mm. It's dense. It's thick. It's heavy. It's burdened with our multiple generations worth of burden and heaviness. Right. So all of that is then in the people that are growing the children and there's there's not very much space for it. I mean, you just said it yourself. There's not much space mm-hmm. for, well, let's see, how do you feel about this? And let's, I mean, it takes time and energy to, to process stuff. It takes a lot of time to be a conscious human being in this day mm-hmm. and age. <laughs> you know, to, oh, yeah. to, to have things happen, like if I have, you know, somebody does me wrong and I've got to find within me the appropriate way to respond and handle that, it takes a bunch of time, you know, to be totally sure. straight. And that is in a fast paced moving world, people don't have that time. People don't have people mm-hmm. don't have the time to actually appropriately handle things. Oh God. And so here it is. Right. So People don't appropriately handle, but here's the energy management piece, is that when you don't appropriately handle something, it doesn't go away. It comes back and bites you. Yeah. Things don't go away because they're still there. They're living within you and they're living within the realm of the relationships or the whatever it was. So. So yeah. things don't go away, and then they become bigger problems, and then they snowball into bigger, bigger problems. And honestly, that's the collective. That's what's going on on the grand yep. scale in our society now, is all these big problems mm-hmm. are all falling apart, everything. <laughs> Sorry. So, so <laughs> right. back to the – so we come into this world where we're, we have so much power. The thing is, is that the world trains us, trains it out of us. Like that's really the answer. Is the world our the world that we come into? It doesn't know how to allow that because the parents and their parents and their parents, like, no way in hell did they know how to uh, to empower and have really powerful mm-hmm. beings as children, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, right. some do perhaps. I mean, mine didn't. <laughs> Anybody I know. No, actually, I do have a couple of people in my world that they were just so amazingly blessed. And I'm like, wow, how did you get it so good? Right? Because we, you know, personally for myself, I, I feel like I, I came in to fight through this. And that was all actually completely by design because I had to know how to forge a path through it in order to fully embody it in myself and then be able to help others. If I just walked I in it. and had it all, I couldn't, yeah, right? So if, and for you too, you know, if we just had it all easy, we, we have zero empathy for the trouble. <laughs> you, well, right. you don't know and even I, what it's like. Yeah, and I don't think, I don't think that, that that's what, not that we don't struggle. I think struggle is great. I think failure is great. I love failing. I love the struggle. I mean, I think that's what builds the resilience, and the resilience is the key to a lot of success. I think what I, mm. I, I think, you know, my question was more directed 
uh, you know, we have to work on ourselves. You know, we got to be better communicators. We got to be yeah. better than we were yesterday. We got, but I always hear about how we're born with such immense power and we can control right. our lives and we're so good and we can become millionaires and we can do whatever we wanted to, like all this powerful stuff, right? But people are sitting there like, yeah, freaking right. Like, you know who I am? <laughs> you know, like people look at themselves and like, yeah, fucking right. You know? So I just, but, but, uh, but as, yeah. yeah. That's the thing though, Sean, is that we are breaking, each person is, we are breaking through the, it's like the lead weight of burden of the belief systems and the consciousness of what we came into. So it's not only what I personally have been, have had as my own experience, but it's the everything that I'm existing within. It's in my society. I am, if I have a huge power in me, I have to break through all of that to own it. Because all of that world around me taught me and everyone else around me that you are nothing and that you don't, you know, not nothing, but you know what I mean. Like we were trained yep. to be squashed down because that's right. how they knew how to do it. And so mm-hmm. our challenge and everyone hearing this, every person who's like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. You say I have all this power. I say to those people, I too I I had no vision. I had, I had no vision capacity. I I can see through everything. I can talk to a person and right. see immediately everything. I had none of that decades ago. I had zero of that. And I live my whole life by that now. And my every move, my every who do I talk to right now? Where do I email? What do I do? I, everything is driven by my inner compass and that vision. Now, I did not have that. I had to reclaim it, remember it. I had to open it back up inside me. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reminded, I'm reminded as we close, I'm reminded by a, by something Zig Ziglar said. And I, I love listening to Zig Ziglar, even watching stuff from back then. It's just so relevant today. And he was, he was speaking at an event and he was asked about motivation. Like, like, how do you maintain your motivation? Like you seem like a very motivating guy. You know, sometimes I'm just not mm. motivated. Sometimes I just, you know, I, I don't feel motivated. And mm. he said that people, people say that, you know, motivation doesn't last. And, you know, he's, he's always confronted with, um, you know, how do you stay motivated every day? And you see a lot of videos of this, right? How do I stay motivated every day? How do I do what I love every day? How do I, you know, whatever. And he was, he was asked straight up, like, how are you just a motivating guy? How do you stay motivated? <laughs> You know, motivation yeah. doesn't last. It, it wavers. And he goes, well, neither does bathing, but that's why we recommend it daily. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I believe it's you work truth. on yourself daily because you have yes. to bathe. You know, if you, go a, if, you, if you go a week without the gym or eating right and you do everything wrong, you smoke, you drink, you do drugs, you hate out of yourself, you get into a car accident, you get sick, you, like everything bad, you break bones, right. everything, you're not taking right. care of yourself. After a week, you're like, this life sucks. But if you right. live a life where you're just 1% better than the day before, if you worked on yourself yeah. every day and got a little bit faster, and a little bit smarter, and a little bit better at your job or your marriage or your parenting or your communicating. You just got a little bit better. I think that you're saying with your core alignment, I think is powerful. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. You know what? You're, you're so right. I love that actually what you're saying. And, and the thoughts that go through me as you were talking is, you know what? I think is that self, it comes back to that self-love piece. Like there's this, 
And, and as you were speaking, I'm, I'm realizing for myself, my spiritual alignment, my spiritual core, uh, I, I have to foster the love that is in that place and that comes from that place. Like, mm-hmm. I, I can't go without that relationship, the relationship, the self-love relationship, the place of mm. really nurturing that, the fire within me. I, I can't live without that, honestly. Right. I mean, I could, but I would I diminish. I, I go mush, sort of like if you eat a bunch of crap, you go mush. Your body goes mush. Like for me, it's that spiritual core energy and being really, staying really in tune with that and really fostering it and growing it. And that it's a relationship and it's, I, I guess I would say maybe the most important one, that spiritual relationship with self and my higher power. And, and that is the constant every day. There's got to be, I, you know, I feel it. I actually am aware of it. If I've been with other people and busy in head work and not paying attention and not grounding myself and staying connected with nature and connected with my source, if I am not doing that every day, I, I start going mush, and I am. It's like I might as well be drinking. It's, it's sticky. I don't like it. <laughs> so <laughs> that is, it, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I didn't realize it until I'm speaking it right now. But um, yeah, it's it's that's the. I think that's the part you're saying of you know the working on yourself every day. Although I don't think of it as working. I think of it as like the uh, drinking the water that I must have to survive. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Wow. Love it. All right. Well, this wow. was everything that I hoped it would be and more. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. It was absolutely amazing. And uh, for the listeners, I want to give them a message. If you had to speak directly mm-hmm. to them, what would the message be? Mm, know your power. <laughs> Know your power. Know your power. Like, and if that doesn't, if you don't know what that means, start start asking. Start asking yourself. Start asking your source, your God. Start pondering it. What does it mean to know your power? What would that look like? How would it be in every interaction if you were actually knowing your power in life, in work, in your with your boss? with your spouse, with your kids? What if you were honoring your own power and honoring that in others? Mm. It's huge. There it is. Huge. Awesome. What do you want the listeners to go find out about you? Uh, Right now, it is the brand new me is facebook.com forward slash my full name, Sharon L. Corsaro. That's it. Perfect. We have that link right there in the show notes. Come and like the page. It's brand new. It's all, this is a new birth. I'm so happy. (laughs) I love it. I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. Yes. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world around her. If any of these resonated with our conversation today with Sharon, talking about your core alignment, the energy, and how you need to work on yourself every single day, connect with her on Facebook, send her a friend request, like the page, and send her a message letting her know that you listened to this episode of Life Transformation Radio. With that, I close the show by saying live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. So until next episode, live a great life.